If you're telling yourself, this is going to improve as soon as she puts blush on, <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope you're right. What is up guys? Welcome back. Today, we are going to get outside of my comfort zone and just play. I have been meaning to basically construct an entire makeup look around these two products. So this is the Smashbox Always On Cream Shadow in the shade Ultramarine. It is a beautiful teal cream eyeshadow. And I want to go in with the Violette FR Yeo Paint in, oh dear, Bleu de Minuit. <laughs> on top of that and see what we can get out of it like a true focal point blue glittery eye and if these don't work well gosh darn it I'm going to shop my stash until I make one work and that is actually what I'm going to do first I'm going to go in with the eyes first and work backwards this is very unlike me but I also realize that if I do all my complexion and jibber jabber the entire time and then do my eyes last I will probably run out of steam and not be able to give them the attention that they deserve. So I don't know, guys, let's just have some fun today and play with some makeup that you have seen. Definitely makeup that you haven't seen all together in this way. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. I see this video almost as me <laughs> just turning the camera on when I would normally be experimenting with makeup on my own <laughs> because I usually try a look first, but that is not what I'm doing today. <laughs> I think I have in mind kind of what I'm going for, but it could go sideways. And when it goes sideways, it's of course pretty funny. So might as well, right? You know, guys, I've watched the handful of other reviews on the Violette line and it's, it's just, you know, people are really, much more skilled than I am at making her eyeshadow formula work. Wow, that I actually look like a clown. <laughs> you have to be kind of fearless. And I guess I just, it just isn't my thing. I think that there is something kind of hard to articulate sometimes. And I, I mean, I did try to articulate it in that video, but it's that I am a representative of a certain type of customer and that is the customer that wants things to be very easy. And that that sometimes frustrates people because they're like, well, you know, if you do take the time and extra effort to make this work, it's incredibly beautiful and rewarding, but there are certain ones of us out there who are not willing to put forth the effort and are not willing to keep a product around that is difficult to use. Because if it is hard and you have it kind of categorized in your brain as being a hard to use product, you're not going to pull it back out. So, you know, that's sort of what I felt like I was re representing in that video. And I'm not trying to just like fall over myself apologizing. I stand by the reason that I gave it the review that I did. But I also, even though it came off as a pretty negative review, I had a lot of good things to say about it too. And I also feel like some people who might have been new to my channel didn't realize that what I was putting together was not meant to be a tutorial. <laughs> it wasn't, um, it was not designed to be a, uh, you know, hey, follow this dot to dot, step by step, and you're gonna get this really gorgeous look because I know that Violette herself would never have combined that eye with that lip. It was more just to show you guys all of the formulas at once, but uh, I did get some people be like, well, I, you know, she would never do this. And I'm like, well, also, I'm not Violette. Violette is Violette. We don't need another Violette because we have Violette kind of thing, so um, yeah. I am actually very excited to get to use this blue shade because I do own the products. I do want to make them work. And I do fancy myself someone who might actually, even though this will make my eyes glow demon red. Yes, it will. I do fancy myself someone who might be able to pull off the right <laughs> blue turquoise green, unnatural colored uh, eye look, you know? And yes, there are eye colors that are more conducive to being able to pull shades off like this. I shouldn't even do underneath my eyes yet because I'm gonna put the rest of my complexion on. You know, I need to go the Raw Beauty Christie route and leave that for last. This is probably the wrong brush to be using 
because it is flat so it's not really wanting to blend things very evenly but I thought that it would help me get it into my lash line and stuff. Also you guys know my eyesight's not like incredible so that looks pretty patchy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to very pure pigments, I think. And I think that's also what bit me in the butt on that Violette review is that, you know, you're supposed to be embracing your imperfection with her line. And I am just, I don't know, maybe I'm no good at that. And, and it's not necessarily that I think that my makeup looks are perfect, but I do go for a decision around whether or not something's going to be saturated. I'm not like, and then I'm just gonna feather it around my lips and forget about it. I just think I end up looking really messy. There are certain people I feel like who can pull off messy and people who can't. And I don't know if I can really pull off messy. And I do feel like it is up to certain brands like Rowan, for example, to make something that is intended to be messy that actually works. And I know it still doesn't work on everybody. Like not nothing works on everybody kind of thing, but God, this is, is this going well? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do know that there's blue all over this tissue because I keep wondering whether the best thing to do here is to work with my finger or a brush, but I do really like this formula in the pink shade, but building the saturation up that I want out of this ultramarine color without spreading it all over God's green earth and also while not making it patchy is proving, it's proving challenging, but I think we're gonna make it work. And even when it's completely dry, you can move it a little bit, but it tends to pick back up, which a lot of cream shadows do. So you have to be careful. Oh dear, what did I just do? <laughs> Again, I tried to be casual. I tried to be messy and it just looks messy. It doesn't, you know what I mean? It doesn't look cool messy. It just looks messy, messy. Ah! Okay, why not? I'm going to go in with the Violette Blue. I'm just gonna do it. And this is navy. So hopefully it'll, you know, just use the ultramarine as a backdrop, but it'll maybe take over, take over the story here probably a much more flattering color on me. Who knows if there is a flattering blue on me? I have no idea. That's not blended very well, but that's a, that's a divine combo. I don't have the biggest fingers in the world, but I do think that they're pretty clumsy. Look, they're clumsy. That's why I'm doing my eyes first. Well, there are several reasons. Oh my God. Bless anyone, bless anyone who like, this is your comfort zone. <laughs> Understand that I admire you because this is so hard for me. I actually like the blue better than that rose color. That rose color did not flatter my skin. Like a warm berry eye. It just was not happening the way that I wanted it to. <laughs> Oh man, so it's always this saying in the art world. You're gonna hate your work of art when it's three quarters of the way done. Like it always looks like a mess when you're halfway to three quarters of the way done. Or, um, you know, it, it, you only pull it together with the last details. That's kind of, you know, another way of saying it. That just especially when you have your quote unquote self invested in what it is that you're creating, it's very easy to let something that's turning out ugly <laughs> tell you that you suck. <laughs> kind of feed into self-loathing, but um, I'm trying to just be a believer here that this will eventually come together. Let's do my complexion, and then I'm gonna kind of pull the highlights out of this with a different color, like a, maybe a different blue like a light blue or maybe just a highlight color if that's where I'm, I'm feeling comfortable. So I don't know why, but I wanna use this today. The typology, do we do, do we do. I'm not, I'm genuinely, God, I hope this doesn't spread blue all over my face. I'm genuinely not trying to be a disaster right now. I'm not. <laughs> I want to be able to make this look cool. 
I don't sit down in front of the camera under false pretenses. I'm always trying to make something that looks nice, but it doesn't always work out that way. I don't know what I just did there. I think I thought I was cleaning that up, but that's not a flattering line. Now it's just like square, like Mimi from Drew Carey eyes. Excellent. Again, we're not going to judge the process. We're just going to judge the outcome. But I know that you guys have told me that seeing me troubleshoot in real time is helpful as if I'm some kind of makeup expert. I'm not. I might be a troubleshooting expert though. <laughs> I might be a, an expert mistake maker. <laughs> you might say that about me. All right, so because that was so low coverage, I am going to compensate with some higher coverage on the concealer. Uh, and that is the Pat McGrath concealer because I love it. I love it. I love it so much. It is one of my favorite purchases that I've made in a very long time. I really hit it big on that Sephora haul. I really just nailed it. <laughs> everything I got, I'm like, yeah. Apologies if it seems like I love everything right now. I just, I got uncannily lucky. Probably gonna end up with like a full beat today because I'm kind of, I can already feel myself compensating for how uncomfortable that eye look makes me. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, we will bronze me to the gods <laughs> and we will apply lots and lots of blush and we will, you know, make sure that I still feel really pretty at the end of it um, instead of avant-garde. I don't think that we've gone too far yet, although I really, wish that that blue would go away. Oh, nosers. Oh, nosers. I look like a drag queen half, like, you know, 10 minutes in, you know, and I haven't, I haven't really like defined the details yet. <laughs> it's just, I really, I look like I have a plan. You know, I look like I have a plan that's going to match these eyes because a drag queen would, but the problem is I don't. <laughs> that's, the problem is that I actually don't know the rest of the plan yet. I would love, oh my God, love to have one of my drag friends come and actually do that for my face. That'd be so cool. Maybe sometime I should just try it, except I know that I would blow it. Like it would just be really bad. <laughs> Gotta really know what you're doing and talk about rallying. Like they are fast, but they still, I mean, you know, I've, I've heard them say uh, on like RuPaul's Drag Race and stuff, like you don't wanna be in a time crunch. You want, you know, over an hour or two hours or something to put that amount of makeup on. It's like theater makeup, you know? So I know that I would get impatient with it, like doing it myself. I'd be very patient having someone do it to me. My friend, Matt, is a drag queen in New York City, which I'm now a lot closer to. He goes by the stage name Horror Chata. We used to work together in Texas. And he is the sweetest human being and he is so talented. I wanna have him on my channel someday. That would be cool. So as far as the Yua paint is concerned, I really wanna make that work. And I do think that I got like a pretty darn nice, <laughs> God bless my bad eyesight. That 4K, it sees a lot better than I do. Um, I was about to say that I think that I got a really nice full saturation there. And uh, what I got was full patturation, as in the conjugation of patch. Pitchy, pitchy, pitchy. And um, Violette actually does, you know, use this stuff as eyeliner as well and just leave it there. Um, and to that I say, you go girl. <laughs> because I am not sure that I can pull that off either. I'm, I'm really looking quite ghoulish. <laughs> I just have to keep it in mind what my, vis my original vision was. Um, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll go back in. <laughs> Full Alexis <laughs> from Schitt's Creek. I'm gonna let that dry <laughs> and then we'll go back in. <laughs> okay, let's do something to my face. Um, I'm gonna go with the 
Wayne Goss bronzer palette because you haven't seen the whole thing on my face yet and something in my instincts, misplaced or otherwise, is telling me that peach would go really beautifully with this. So this peachy bronzer is what I'm going to do. And at least it will help bring some life into my face because the blue seems to be doing its best to drain said life from my face. Tippy tap, we might be here a minute. Oh, the right bronzer just really helps, doesn't it? No, avalanche. I'm gonna end up looking like Trixie Mattel, except without the talent. Okay, she's bronzed. She might need to be more bronzed, but she is bronzed. I'm gonna go with a smaller brush this time for my bronzer or my contour because when I did that video, I realized that um, it was the lights blinding me. I was like, I can't see that contour. It was because the lights were too bright in my eyes and I had turned them down that day and I needed to turn them down even more because it was like I was blinded by light. Wrapped up like a douche. No. My husband would be appalled that I don't know every word to that song. It is not sung by Bruce Springsteen, but it is written by Bruce Springsteen. And that is important to him. See, this is very much, especially the topics of conversation are just the things that I would be thinking inside my head while experimenting with makeup. Instead, I'm just saying them out loud. If you're telling yourself, this is going to improve as soon as she puts blush on, <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> Hope you're right. Oh, that's too much. That's too much. See, it's like weirdly hard to see. Um, just chasing a feeling here. I'm going with the uh, the Wayne Goss pink blush, coral rose. I don't know what's going on right now. Nikki Tutorials is cringing. Let's just put some highlighter on too, just for, um, you know, just for good measure. Okay, I did pull out this. Obviously this is not a tutorial, so. The fact that this uh, palette is like unavailable now is inconsequential because I don't see any of you actually doing this makeup look, but I'm going to use the Crystal Grid palette from Aether because this blue is out of control right here and it like lives rent free in my brain is one of my favorite like icy blue highlight shades. Look at that color. Oh my God. It's so satisfying. And I literally left that gap open right next to my eye just to put that there because I was like, well, if nothing else, that will bring it together. And there's actually a really nice little turquoise shade in here too. And uh, I might just lean on my relative comfort zone of um, powder versus cream here. Not that cream is necessarily intimidating, but blue cream is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to, ooh, you know, this actually right here, it's like a very deep shade of teal. And I'm gonna use that to blend those two colors together in a way that looks like I knew what I was doing the whole time. And even use it underneath my eyes because after all that, you can bet your buttons I am not pulling another cream shadow out <laughs> and trying to paint it on top of what I just did. Pat McGrath would cringe. Look at that. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Almost, almost, almost. It doesn't really want to move the you paint, but you know, you're not gonna be looking at it that closely, right? Kind of like when I have baby barf on my shirt. I'm like, yeah, nobody will see that. See, and Raw Beauty Christy could do this. And not just because her eyes are lighter, but just like she, she could do this. She could keep a level head while she applied these crazy colors on her eyes. She would pop on some lashes and it would look like it was sent from heaven. And while I think that I am improving on the situation, ooh, let's go in with this like sparkly turquoise. I still don't think that this is going to end up being something anybody would ever want to repeat. 
she says confidently. <laughs> okay, my camera's about to die on my battery, so I'm going to replace my battery. I'm going to throw on my liner, my eyelashes, not my eyelashes, my mascara, and my brows, and then we'll come back and see what we come up with. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of mascara <laughs> and eyeliner. I'm not saying that I think that this is the best look that I've ever done. I do think I need a little more blush, but we're going to do lips first. It actually looks better in person than it does on camera. That's why I keep looking at my monitors because I was like, I thought that this was going pretty well actually. And then I look in the monitor, I'm like, eh, not so much. But I've decided, hear ye, hear ye, that this is going to be a very nude lip situation because I just, we only want one thing going on. It is a focal point blue eye look. So I'm just gonna go with this brand new lip liner that you guys have never heard of. It's called Khaki and it's from Thrive Cosmetics. And I'm going to go in with like my new, my new baby, my new love. And this is the Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm from Westman Atelier in the shade Nana. And I just use it every opportunity I get because it's so beautiful. Mm. It's just so like cool toned, lavender beige. Mm. And the formula is just dreamy. That's just downright lovely right there. It makes my life easy. All right, my eyes are looking quite sockety, but it's because the blue gives this strange illusion that like my under eye is very cool toned and white. And I think that maybe the way to counteract that is to kind of take something coral and like blend it down a little bit. Maybe we use my blush, that's a good idea. Because A, it means that I don't have to pull out another palette, and B, it means that um, everything will, you know, stay kind of subtly in the same family. I forget that this also means that I have to go clean all of my brushes because now they all have blue on them, which is so insanely frustrating. That is not my blush palette. This is my blush palette. All right, so yeah, not coral. Well, coral rose and just add a touch of pink there right underneath the blue. Even if it's slightly undetectable, I just want it to be part of the eye look in a way that just does something other than go blue, blue, blue. Maybe I'll add a little bit of it up here too. A little bit of pink up there. Make all that look just a little more intentionally weird instead of like just weird weird. And I'm not even sure that you would look at that and go, oh, she just put pink. It's almost like I put purple in there or lavender. And I think, like I said, I do need more blush. <laughs> when you reach for your brush, but it doesn't have a butt. <laughs> anyway, there we go. I am just continuing with the same blush just because I don't want to look like a clown. I don't want to pull out something that when I put it on my face, it just very quickly goes like, you know, contrasty orange or something. I want to stay in this family that I'm comfortable with and my comfort zone. It's like, if the eyes are not going to be my comfort zone, everything else needs to be well within my comfort zone. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna spritz it. I'm just gonna spritz it. Because it's a lot of powder. <laughs> Let me move you guys out so you can see the full look <laughs> and just aspire, <laughs> just aspire. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I talk a lot in a self-deprecating way so that I don't have to feel so much pressure to make sure that something like this, especially when I haven't done it a whole lot of times, um, that it's gonna, you know, if it goes poorly, you expect it to go poorly. And if it goes well, you're pleasantly surprised. We're all pleasantly surprised. And I would say that it was real touch and go until I pulled out a powder eyeshadow and, you know, brought my comfort zone formula wise back into the equation, but, I would say, I would say that, <laughs> I need to get off camera, um, that 
all things considered, I made the Yua paint work and I made the always on cream shadow work. I feel like even though I went in and blended with some powders, this is still mostly those two things from a local color and texture standpoint. Um, and you know, I think Aether Beauty's amazing blendable formula for making me be able to come in there and bail myself out. I feel like the only thing that this really needs, and I think that the problem, the thing that makes my eyes look red is because the blue underneath my eyes backs right up to my eyeball, whereas I've got a really nice line here because I have my mascara and my eyeliner, which makes me want to take something and put it in my waterline. I wonder if that would make a difference. Let's find out. Oh my God. As if by some kind of kismet, I pulled the right product out the first time. This is the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal Liner in Cocoa. Ooh, it needs to be sharpened and I cannot locate a sharpener, but it's my eyes, so. Do I ever do this? No. Do I love that? The reason that I don't ever tight line is because I feel like it does make my eyes look smaller. I kind of want you to lose that line underneath my eyes because, uh oh, I'm getting it everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting it everywhere. Um, I want you to kind of lose the line underneath my eyes because I feel like it kind of increases the illusion a lot of times. Well, now I kind of have to make the mistake on both sides, don't I? All right, well, that's what this little spudger on the other side is for, right? Right, khaki, everybody in unison. You're definitely not completely blowing it. It's a look. <laughs> I'm not sure it's my look, I'm not sure it's the look, but it's a look. And um, I did, at the end of the day, solve for the uh, blue going right up to my eyeball thing, so mission accomplished. Maybe now that I did that, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going. Um, I'm gonna blow out the lash line just a little bit more with this lovely little turquoise shade in that Aether palette. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Kaki. You for sure know what you're doing. That was actually really, 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 really pretty. I like that muchly. And then I will also take the blush again. The blush, Kaki, the blush and work that in to the blue. And then I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm gonna make myself a smoothie and my mother-in-law is going to look at me like I've lost my mind. But uh, I don't know guys, I think it's kind of a vibe. What do you think? I think that I made some decisions that ended up being good decisions. I think that I learned some things that ended up being good things that I learned, like that the tight lining thing actually really makes a difference. It um, might not be the most flattering look for someone who has small eyes, but it does keep my eyes from glowing demon red. So plus there. Yeah. What do you guys think? Let me know down below um, and feel free to tell me the truth, which is probably it looks fine, but it's not your best look. <laughs> I know, but I did want to use these. I do like to get out of my comfort zone. I don't want to show you guys the same thing all the time. And if you've got light eyes or green eyes or any other color besides the same color as mine, just this, you know, brown that does kind of want to lean a little bit red, then this might have been incredibly helpful. Those might be the two blue shadows that just like, you know, complement your eye look and that's exactly what you've been looking for. At least it's blended. I do feel like it's blended. There is that. So um, it wasn't an all out disaster. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. My eyes are starting to sting. <laughs> I think I got eyeliner directly in them. So that's fun. I'm um, gonna go wash my face and uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I just keep looking at myself because it's so weird.